So a little bit about me. I am not from New Jersey. I am from the Midwest. I grew up in Illinois. I did swim out there for Naperville YMCA. I was a YMCA swimmer. I swam for Naperville. Uh, I did also swim in college. I went to school in West Virginia, in a small school in West Virginia. I was not by any means off the chart swimmers, but I just, I swam for fun. I did not start swimming until competitive, I mean, club swimming until I was a junior in high school. So I pretty much did summer league high school. And then a friend of mine in high school wanted to try club. So I had to drive 45 minutes because I lived in a rural part of Illinois and drove 45 minutes to a, the nearest club, which was in Naperville, Illinois. And that's where we swam. I was a distance swimmer and a sprint breaststroker for my main events. Uh, my husband, that's, I, he is from New Jersey. That's how I got to New Jersey. I met him here and we have one daughter who is a senior in high school this year. Uh, let's see, I've been in aquatics for quite some time. I started when my daughter went into preschool, gave myself something to do. I was a stay at home mom up until recently. Before that, I was in the professional world then when we had our daughter, she went to preschool. I went into teaching swimming at the Y and I taught swimming for many years, ran and operated a swim school where I only taught three to five year olds how to swim. And many of those kids, thank God, I love it, are on the team now. So it's fun. So I've been able to be with some of these kids I literally taught when they were babies. So that was fun. I started coaching with Shy in 2014 as an eight and under coach and then progressed up to our 13 and over world. So I've kind of had my hand in every single age group. Uh, and then the last thing there is just another thing of why I'm doing this. And I love to give back in all forms. Uh, this is a passion of mine and more than anything, it's for the kids. I am the type of person that I already had my opportunity. I had my opportunity because parents and adults were around to give that to me and I want to pay that back to the kids and I want to be able to have our kids experience organized sports. I think it's important. I think youth sports is very important. I have a real big passion on youth sports. So if I can do that and our kids have that outlet, that is what's great for me. So that's me in a nutshell. Okay, so now our mission and purpose. I'm not going to read this through detail. This is pretty much the same mission and purpose that we've had all along. Basically, in a nutshell, this is, uh, you know, it's to give, again, the kids the opportunity to participate in organized sports, uh, to guide and encourage them through that kind of stuff, making sure sportsmen like conduct is there. The other mission that I like is being able to grow our children into life building skills. So swimming gives them more than just the sport. It's also using moments that happen in swimming to offer our kids life building uh, things that they just need. Because let's face it, in the long run, this is going to end and they're going to need to build into a career. Okay, next slide. So how are we gonna do this? Well, Put another quote up there. Kids are used to me saying this a lot. Yes, this is going to take us a while to get our mission and our vision in place. But if we do this a little bit at a time, one step at a time, it's going to add up over. So how are we going to accomplish these missions and purpose? It's going to be by building trust. And trust is through experience and trust is through relationships. So our goal is to build those relationships, not only with the children who are swimming, but also with the adults and the parents that need to help us continue this path for the kids. Staying technique driven for all ages. Uh, I am a technique highly, how do I wanna put it? Technique is one of the things that I will never ever stop doing, even with the fastest group of kids. So we will always be a technique driven organization. Because as I tell the kids, we can build speed on technique. We cannot build speed on bad technique. So technique will always be the first and forefront. Providing age appropriate developmental paths. This is another thing that is in our vision is making sure that the children are getting the right path 
for them developmentally. And that goes from the time they are eight all the way to the time they are seniors. Those paths are gonna look different for everybody. We will do our best, but every, you know, we pretty much have done this for a long time. So developing those paths and knowing what the children need is where our focus is going to be and making sure that everybody is getting what they need. Hiring, maintaining the best coaching staff. One thing that I do like about our, our uh, GSCY is that our coaching staff is very deep in experience. Most of our coaching staff have swam. They have come in out of the swimming world and they have a knowledge with it. So I've been on the pool deck with many teams and they do not have the depth that we have in our coaching staff. So I think that's something we can be proud of. And I think it's something that looking forward helps us with our mission of making us the best team that we can be. And then creating environment where everyone wants to be involved. So that's a really important one is trying to make that this, you know, what does that look like for the kids? Making sure that we're keeping fun. We all heard the statistics that in swimming, most kids stop because it's no longer fun. This is a sport you will hear on the pool deck that the phrase is often used is that we eat our young. And what that refers to is that the children, this is a very intense sport from a very early age. So most sports are not practicing up to six days a week, two hours a day. Uh, my daughter's best friend plays softball. She's probably gonna play in college. She does not go and play six days a week, two hours. So this is an endurance sport, it is intense. So keeping this fun and keeping it somewhere where everybody wants to be involved is also one of the things that we're going to do, okay? Uh, next slide is basically our coaching staff, uh, the 13 and over lead coaches, the 12 and under lead coaches you see there. Most of these guys have already, you know, they've been around. We don't, we have a few new assistant coaches. Jackie actually was at Hillsborough. We brought her back. Scott as an assistant coach is new and he's coming over. He was at Randolph and he's coming to work with the older kids. So this is basically our coaching staff. Okay, next slide. So now we're gonna get into basically the agenda of the meeting and what I'm gonna to try to touch on the key topics of what we are expecting and what we need from the families. So the first one is communication. We are recording this. So I'm gonna give a lot of these bullet points are just summaries to kind of keep me on track. I'm also going to put this on the website. We're gonna put this on the website along with my notes that'll be a little more detailed. So don't, you don't need to write everything down or anything like that. I will get everything up there and loaded for you, okay? Email is our main form of communication. That's what we're gonna use. The one thing we're running into right now is people do not want to read their emails. So we need and ask everybody to please read those emails. I know at the beginning of the year, some of those are gonna be rather long because the coaches are sending out welcome emails. So just keep those emails. If you can't read them all at one time, just keep them to the side, especially those welcome ones because the coaches have put a lot of information on how the season will go for that. 13 and overs, they should be receiving the emails as well. In TU, you can put their email and you can verify them and they will receive the emails. In the 13 and over uh, groups, I and the other coaches wanna hold the children responsible for taking ownership of this sport that they're in now. So it's very important that they're receiving the emails and that we're teaching them how to respond to those emails and the actions they should be taking to that. So I do ask that. 12 and unders, parents, you can decide if you want them on the emails. I know that Andrea does like to have the kids, especially in the lightning group. I, anything under that, they don't really need to be on the emails, but anybody aging up into a 13 and over, so if they're 12 and they're gonna be aging up next year, you can start that process of getting them and helping them through what that looks like. Okay, team-wide emails are gonna come from myself, Andrea, I don't know why that's not there, Andrea, Adele, and myself will be, anything that needs to go out to the team as a whole, you can expect emails from us. Anything that is practice group related, the lead coaches will put those communications out, okay? 
I am not a believer in over communicating, especially in our world today, where there is a ton of communication and a ton of different ways to get it. So the practice group coaches understand that they will put out their email uh, based on what their needs are. I don't know what every group's needs are. So every practice group, I've kind of put that in their hands. That's why I'm saying anything that's team-wide related, that'll come from myself, Adele, or Andrea. Anything that's just specific to the group, that's going to come from your lead coaches, okay? We put down here the many ways to stay connected and informed. I highlighted the website because I'm finding out that either people don't know we have a website or what I found out over this summer was that people get, they are in the TU, which is where you sign your kids up for meets and they stay at that screen and they didn't even know that there was a website. So if you go down to the bottom left of the Team Unify screen, it'll say view website view our website is what I think it is, or view team website. If you click on that, it'll take you out to our website. Our website has a ton of information on it. That is where we post everything. We're going to start, we're going to keep building it. It's just a really great resource. And it's where you can find most of your answers. So I would start there. Facebook and Instagram, of course, that's, you know, us just posting and YouTube is where we do our streaming. Communication boundaries with the coaches. We're going to go back to boundaries with the coaches. I know with the pandemic, there has been a lot of communication, but I want to go back to respecting, especially the part-time staff, because most of our staff has full-time jobs. They do something outside of this. They come here because for the same reason that I have, they really just want to give back to the kids and they all swam and they want to be able to have opportunities for the kids to swim. So they do this out of a passion and they come often from their jobs straight onto the pool deck. So I do want to kind of guard them with that communication boundaries. We're going to, the safe sport rules are eight to eight, Monday through Friday is when we can communicate with you. I'm putting eight to five just because I think uh, that's more than enough time for everybody to communicate. Listen, the coaches are going to do what they need to do. So all I'm asking is that we're respectful of their time, which means if you send them a communication, then don't expect, just give them 24 to 48 hours, I guess is what I'm saying to uh, respond back. Okay. They're not going to, I've already had a coach's meeting yesterday. I've asked for no communication when they're on deck. Phones are to be put away. Watches are be, to be put away and the kids get all of our attention. So if you are trying to communicate with a lead coach, especially myself or Evan, who are doing two groups, we might be on that pool deck for four or five hours. So you might not get an answer to the next day. So just be patient with that is all that I ask uh, for that. Okay. All right. So now we're going to move on to a couple of things that are coming back. And I put stars here because the handbook will be coming back and that's going to be going out shortly for everybody to sign. So the asterisk just means these are things that are going to go back into our handbook that were taken out during the pandemic. Locker rooms. Locker rooms are back. However, what we want to do is we do want to encourage that the locker rooms are only being used to change, to get dressed, to either come out to practice, to go to dry land, what have you. We're asking that everybody keeps their bags and all their stuff remain on the pool deck during practice. The reason for this is we have, especially like at a Bridgewater where we have multiple groups coming and going there are too many bags in the locker room and it becomes overwhelming. There are times where like there's 70 plus bags in that locker room. So we have a lot more space on the pool decks. Plus it just keeps everything out of the members ways when we're in these other facilities where we have to share member space. So if, if you are in the locker room and you leave your bag or what have you in there, you have to have it in a locker. The kids are going to have to have it put away. We cannot have our stuff all over. So locker rooms are a privilege for everybody. They're not something that are given. So code of conduct, all that stuff falls into place with the locker rooms, okay? They will not be available on late night practices because the facilities are trying to close up and we're running up to those closing times. 
So we're asking that just be prepared that that one late night that you have, can you just throw on clothes and go or what have you is what we're going to do with locker rooms, but they will come back. Kids can go in there. They can get out of their wetsuit. Um, and then also for dry land, they can bring dry land clothes and change and do things like that. All right, next policy is our youth protection policy. So this is in regards to drop-offs and pickups. So the youth protection policy, just so everybody knows, is that that's a policy that the YMCAs in the US follow. It is not the GSC YMCA policy. So I know that gets confusing for some people, but it is a policy we follow. We take very serious our children that are in our building. So we put a lot of policies in place to help protect the children that are in our building. Okay, so that's what these policies, these are not designed to make your life miserable. They are designed to protect the children. It's the same thing that if you come into our building and you're not a member, you will be asked to show a license and you will be put through the same system that the school districts use to weed out offenders. Okay, so we just want to make sure that there are no unwanted guests in and about our children. So we are asking that everybody please follow these. Please do not yell at the Welcome Center when they ask you to follow the policy. They're just enforcers. The drop-offs, 10 and unders, they have to have someone over 18 accompany them to the pool deck and remain there until a coach takes over. The pool decks look different at every facility. We all kind of know what we do. Like at Bridgewater, they're going to wait out in Hillsborough, I believe, out in a common area. Uh, Shy, Somerville, those areas, they're going to be walked to the pool deck. But you cannot just drop and run. So you have to make sure that there's a coach there and that they're ready to take over because now that becomes the adult that takes over those 10 and unders. 11 and overs, they can enter the facility uh, by themselves, but the code of conduct rules do apply here. Last year in Hillsboro, I had a lot of phone calls from the Welcome Center there because they were very loud in the Welcome Center area. So we just need to make sure that they are behaving themselves. So if you get a phone call from us with an 11 over that is not following the code of conduct rules, again, then parent, you're going to probably have to be with them until they can behave. Pickups, 10 and unders, same thing. They must be picked up from the pool deck by someone 18 and older. It is not, they cannot, we cannot send them out to the car for pickup. You have to pick them up. 11 overs, they can exit the facilities by themselves. No parking in front of any of the facilities. This is a fire hazard. This is not us again. This is all the townships asking us not to do that for cases of fire. So we just have to make sure that you're not parking in front of any of the facilities that you're parking in the parking lot. So what I did with my daughter, I used to just, we had one spot that I would always park and she kind of knew that's where she would have to go. Also, please respect the staff and picking up swimmers on time, both the coaching staff and the staff that's closing the Y with late nights. We have been known to be there 30 minutes after waiting for parents to pick up their kids. So that's not fair to the coaching staff. It's not fair to the staff that's working there. But if we can, especially on the late nights, pick those kids up, that would be great. The other thing with the eight and unders, that's hard for the coach to be able to go on to the next thing and get things started when parents aren't picking the kids up. It's not the responsibility for anybody to babysit these kids. So all we're asking is that you are picking these kids up. Okay. The other thing is we are going to, there is no observation on any balconies at any of the pools. Some, especially at Bridgewater, we have to use the balcony as rollover for dry land. So the kids are going to be up there having to do dry land. And the other thing is Listen, we just came out of the pandemic. We have the kids trained now where they come in the pool, they do their thing and they go. It's very distracting to have parents up on the pool deck, either watching and looking over the railings because especially with the younger kids, they want to wave to mom and dad, they get excited. So less distractions, especially now that the kids are used to drop and go, we would like to keep it that way. So there's nobody out 
anywhere on the pool deck can you observe. The other thing that can't happen is photography or uh, filming. We cannot do photography or filming because there is no way that you are able to get that one athlete in that picture. And all we're asking is think about, do you want your child on everybody's social media in their bathing suit? I know I don't. So just be respectful that photos and all that aren't happening. Okay. All right. So that's our youth protection plan to do. Yes. Okay. So we're going on roster policy. That is also going back into the handbook. I think this is pretty, it's, um, basically our policy of how we do a lot of different things. We're encouraging well-rounded students. That's what this little blurb says. We want our kids to be multi-sport athlete. At the beginning, I told you I'm a fan of youth sports. I really am. I think that the more sports, when children can do multiple sports in whatever kind of atmosphere, it helps build different muscles. It helps them with everything. We understand we want to encourage that, okay? But at the same time, that has to balance with our program and the accountability that you put into our program. We are a club swim team. So therefore, we are competitive. We need to make sure that that accountability is in place, okay? We do not, you know, we'll work with you guys on what you have to do, but you need to make sure that if you're multi-sporting or another thing that you have, whatever it is, extracurricular activity that you're working with your lead coach on figuring out what that schedule for the season looks like so that you can be accountable for our sport. As I said at the beginning, this is an endurance sport. So when you are out of the water, it does hurt your swimming progression. So we want to make sure that everybody is doing the right thing. It also helps the groups when people show up. Okay. Uh, the next, the next slide will go over in general. This is all going to be in the handbook. So you do not need to remember this. Attendance, 80% for the seniors, 75 for the juniors, 70% for the lightning athletes. There is no attendance for our nine tens or our eight and unders, the thunder and waves. Okay. These are minimum attendance with the sport. The more you give, the more you get back. So a lot of people had asked about attendance. It's basically we give them one day off and then there's another day. Now that another day is not intended to just be taken every week. The other day is there to built in for those absences that might have to happen because you're a multi-sport athlete, you get sick, you do anything. Think about it as work when you have sick leave. You don't take all your, I mean, I just found out cause I didn't know I had sick leave that I have 90 days. Well. I'm not taking 90 days. I'm not taking a sick leave, right? It's there for when I need it. So that's what that extra day is there for. Okay. Absences that will be, that won't count against you or any medical excuses that the doctor absolutely tells you you cannot go in the water. Okay. So, but you're going to need a doctor's note. COVID precautions that remove you from the pool also have to be provided with a doctor note. And those are all excusable absences. And please, I'm hoping we are to a point that if you have COVID or you think you might have COVID that you're testing and making sure that you're not coming to the pool deck because it still is around. Death in the family and coach mandated days off are all things that we will excuse the absence. The performance part of that roster policy is lightning into the season with one silver qualifying time juniors are going to end the season with two silver qualifying times seniors with a minimum of three and these are what we're going to use down the road eventually with establishing groups and putting rosters and things together okay so if you're not meeting any of these you will have to try out for the team again which that will be an internal tryout okay all right next slide meets Let's go over our meets. Let me just make sure. Did you guys? Okay. All right, meets. We are looking hopefully at a full schedule of meets. And for us, that means a full schedule of hosted meets. So a couple things that happened last year that we we're gonna play around with. So declarations. So when you go in to declare if your child is going to swim the meet or not swim the meet, 
We are going to go, there's too many, there's over 400 families. We cannot possibly assume and don't want to assume that everybody's weekend is free for me. So what we're asking is that people sign up if they want to go. If you do not sign up, you will not be entered in the meet. We're just gonna assume if you didn't sign up, you could not participate, okay? So the declarations though need to be done on time for that to happen, okay? So let's see with the declarations. Let's see, I covered that. Yes, meets have to be um, done on time. We're no longer putting the kids in, you guys will do it. Reason being for that is it was getting costly when people were forgetting to do things and we would put everybody in and then people would say, well, I don't wanna pay and I don't wanna do this. So we're just, again, not gonna assume we know your calendar. You guys know what you can do or won't. The hope is that the meet schedule, will all the meets will go into Team Unify at one time and you can sign up for everything that you wanna sign up for the full year. We will still put out every time before when the meet opens and the date that the meet's going to close so that if it becomes February and you've signed up now in October, you can say, oh no, wait, I got a plan now and you can go and remove your swimmer. Okay. So we will still put out those timelines for you, but you are able to go, or if you're that type of person that just wants to go ahead and commit to everything, then you can go ahead and do it so that you don't forget to do it. With me, it's another thing that's really important show up on time. So on time means not in the parking lot. It means that your athlete is on deck, ready to get in for warmups and you need to, they need to be there at least 15 minutes before. Okay. So we are a big team. We have groups that go and they're rather large at times. And there are things that the coaches have to do in order for the meet to start. And one of those things is we have to check in every athlete. So that takes a while to do. So please have your kids there 15 minutes prior so we can get all the stuff we need to do, check-ins to get them done. The other thing is most of these kids do not drive. So parents, this is up to you. And what I always say is if this matters to your kid and your athlete, this means something to them, then you need to show them that you care about it by getting them to untie. Back to my beginning story, life building skills, teaching them that we got to go to work. We have to show up in time to go to work or at work. If you miss work a few times too many, you're going to get fired. So we want to make sure that those kids are showing up. It's getting very stressful for the kids when they do not get there on time. So just make sure that those stresses can get relayed. Scratches. Uh, you're going to let your group coaches know of any scratches ahead of time if you cannot make it. So say you forgot or what have you or something came up, you're just going to let them know that you can't be there for whatever reason. Event scratches, not a habit I'm a fan of. Don't like it. Don't like to get into that uh, little thing. So there are there's a time and place for event scratching. There are certain meets where we can put kids, we can over enroll them. And those meets have a time and place. And that's a strategy and we plan those out. But the most of the in-season meets, the regular meets are not that. So make sure when you're signing the children up and in 13 and overs, they should be doing this themselves and they should be going in and in the notes section, they can put down what they want to swim but they should be talking to those coaches and figuring that out and that plan before the day of the meet. Okay. So the day of the meet, we are not getting there. We are not scratching on the day of the meet for in season meets. Again, I said, there are planned meets. Most of those are at the end at championships. Okay. The swimmers have to speak to the coach, not the parent. Yes. Even 12 and unders life building moment. It's our job to teach these kids how to start talking to adults other than their parents. So before we send them out to college where they have to talk to all kinds of adults that they're not used to, we might as well use these years to help guide them and learn how to do that. So we do really want you to encourage your swimmer to speak to the coaches 
about what they want to do and what they want to swim so that we avoid doing that scratching. Sometimes scratching is done because they're nervous. So we just need to get them through that kind of stuff. Okay. Meet schedules, they will be released at the beginning of October. This is how it always was done before the pandemic because all the teams are getting their seasons together right now, getting their meets up and about. Each group coach, we, are, we will not travel as a team to most meets. We will travel to meets based on your groups. There will be our hosted meets that we will have majority of the team there together. But anything that we're not hosting, we will go offsite as groups uh, for that. The fees, responsibility of the fees, we are going to go back to, you have to have a credit card on file to participate in the program. We need a credit card there because you are responsible for, for your meet fees. So when you sign up and your child swims, there are fees for that meet and there are fees for each event. There are fees for all that. So we have to have a credit card. They are going to be billed on a monthly basis. So all the meets that are in that month will be, go out and be billed at one time. So we need to have a credit card on file because we should not with 400 families, we need to make sure that we're watching our cost with all that. And if you do not have a credit card on file, we're gonna go back. We used to ask people to have a credit card on file. If they did not, they were not allowed to participate. So just go in, make sure that you have all that on file, okay? Next screen is basically just the non-hosted versus the hosted meets. There was a lot of questions about information for meets. Non-hosted meets, anything that we are not hosting that we're going to, all the information is posted on the meet page on Team Unify, okay? So, and the instructions are there. We'll have this up. That is where you will receive all that information because we're privy to what they send us. So we basically copy and paste when we get it from them and we just post it there. Anything that we are hosting, that our team is hosting, we will post everything you need to know on our website under the tab hosted meet. So you can find everything there from warmups, anything you need will be on the hosted meet. That's our meet, so we'll have all the information we can post it. Meets, I know people get anxious. To be honest, most meet information doesn't hit anybody until the Wednesday before the meet. So I know a lot of people want to plan further in advance. It's just not how the swimming world works. We get most of our information the Wednesday before the meet starts. So we post all that information as soon as we get it. All right. Uh, parents, so the next slide is pretty quick. It's the parent committee leadership. Um, oh, you can move to the next slide. This is parent, so PCL is what we refer to it a lot of times. The, this is a parent group that oversees all the administrative financial general support for our swim team. The why is the program. We run the program under there, but this, this committee does a lot above and beyond to make sure that the swim team can operate. And these are, this is parents of swim team members, okay? The PCL page is on our website under parent information. So they post everything there. They have meeting dates there. They do hold a meeting once a month. Anybody can go on there and go to that meeting. Um, agenda minutes, all that information that's talked about is on there. Okay, the uh, members of the PCL are going to, the, we wanted to keep this short, so we're going to break it out and the PCL is going to be available at the picnic. Uh, one thing that we are going to do this year is we're going to put out volunteer signups at the picnic. So we're going to have tables, we're going to have sheets for every different thing that we need parents help for and you can just sign up at the beginning of the season and do that all there at the picnic so they will be there to help with that uh, next slide just kind of shows how the committee org chart goes lauren barnacle is our chair melissa thompson is the vice chair kim lamont is our finance and myra is our lovely she does all the website and all the media so everything you're looking at she does and then as you see here, I'll just quickly go over uh, the bottom side of that is all the different committees that we have people 
that oversee the committees, this picnic, what I'm talking about when you sign up, that's what that's going to be for is to be able to help these leads and these committees kind of make things operate. Okay, so as you see here, it is quite a handful to run a team. And it takes a lot of people and a lot of hands on to do it. So I thank everybody who is already involved in that. And hopefully we can um, move forward to getting more people involved and it should move a lot smoother. Uh, next one is the parent committee leadership contact. So we're gonna keep this up. That can also be found on the website under that parent, but this will be in the recording and on the thing. Next slide is volunteering. And volunteering. So just want to touch on this. I put it there, pay it forward. So we're all parents. So this is the deal. We, this cannot run without volunteering. That's just the end. It's just how it is. It's too big. Swimming is a sport that just takes a lot of people to run a swim meet. And again, the swim meets are run to give our kids the opportunities. Some of these swim meets we run because they need opportunities to get closed wide meets so they can participate at the end in championships because you cannot just participate in championships. You need to have a certain amount of meets to participate in certain championships. Okay, so this is, you know, all I ask with volunteering is we're a large enough team that if everybody takes a little bit of chunk at a part, it should not be overwhelming for anybody. And, you know, it's just paying it forward. As I said at the beginning, I do this because I'm trying to pay it forward to the kids to give them an opportunity to do this. Without us, they will not have this opportunity to do. So, and it is swimming. It's important to them. If it's important to your kids, all I ask is that you help out with the volunteering, okay? Um, where the policy will be in the handbook again, it's, you know, it, everybody pretty much knows on this website, uh, you're going to get points based on how many kids you have, uh, swimming, and then you're going to accrue points. The fact of the matter is, you know, we want you to volunteer. We don't want to have to reinstate point policies, which provide fines at the end if you did not meet your points and things like that. We are going back to doing fines, but we don't wanna do that. That is not what this is about. That is just the ultimate of where it's come. We actually want you to volunteer. We want you to be there. I enjoy when the parents are on the pool deck. I have a lot of fun with parents when they're on the pool deck. I, you know, and we want to have just as much as fun as the kids. So it's nice when the, when the parents are paying it forward. Okay. So just remember it's about the kids and the volunteering is really to give them the opportunities to be able to go on. Listen, as I said, we should be proud. We're the number one YMCA swim team in the country. There is no other YMCA that is ahead of us. So, you know, this is a big hat to wear, but it's a big hat that we should be very proud of and that we should look, you know, people look upon us and what we do. And I, you know, I'm proud that I'm a coach of that kind of team and proud of that's what we can make for our kids. And you know what, in the state of New Jersey, we are the number one team, both USA and YNCA. So, People want to come to our meets. They want to do that. They want us coming to their meets. They want us to be involved. So let's do that. And let's, I think as a team, we can do that. All right, next one is sportswear and equipment. Okay, sportswear and equipment. This year we are doing, we are doing a new vendor. This vendor is California Beach Hut. They are out of Denville. The reason we're doing this is because it can do one-stop shopping for families. I think it, I just wanted to make it convenient for families to be able to get everything at one vendor instead of having multiple vendors that they either have to pick up from or drive from because we could never coordinate when everything could come together. So they will be on site on Monday the 19th and Tuesday the 20th. And I did put out a I put out a recent thing with the dates and the locations. I believe it's Bridgewater on Monday and Shy on Tuesday. Sportswear and equipment, this is a big one. If 
we're going to give everybody when she comes, when California Beach Hut, they're going to come, they're going to deliver, you're going to have a time to pick up. If you do not pick up for whatever reason, that's fine. We will hold it in the coach's office at Bridgewater for two weeks. After that, it will be tossed. This will be a hard line. We are 400 plus, almost 500 families. We cannot house that large amount of sportswear and equipment. And I, the, the stores cannot house that much of equipment, okay? So I think two weeks is more than generous because nobody's going in the middle of the school year for a two week vacation. Two weeks is more than generous. It's going to sit in the coach's office. You can pick it up if you can't get to one of the drop-off days. I understand why someone would not be able to get to a drop-off day, but two weeks, have your kid pick it up, what have you. If it's not picked up, then we're going to have to just um, toss it, okay? No more legacy gear. That's the biggest thing. We are two years into this, two years of having really, really, really nice sportswear. Our sportswear people have put on phenomenal sportswear sales. There has been more than enough selection. They've been, it's been rather large selection, more than enough. There is no more legacy gear. We are, and this is with our vision too, we are GSCY. We need to represent as GCSY. So no more shy and no more SVY gear. You would never see a New York Giants person that just went to go play for the Jets carrying their Giants gear into the Jet. Okay, so we are GSCY. We are proud to be GSCY. The legacy gear, believe me, I have a lot of it myself, is all over my house. I wear it when I'm in my house. I wear it to clean. My magnets are on my refrigerator. That's the other thing. I know a lot of people haven't looked at their cars recently. I'm just asking everybody to go out, look at their cars for their magnets. Make sure that they don't have legacy magnets. Um, I'm just giving that a heads up. If magnets go missing one day, I don't know. They might. But legacy gear, we're going to move forward and uh, get rid of that. We will give, listen, we understand people make mistakes, do things. You know, if the first week or so people come in, we're going to gently give them reminders that we are no longer wearing SVY or shy stuff so next next screen officials this is the last thing i think we're ending it um we need officials so you know consider becoming an official we have everything posted on the website so go to the website if you're interested in being officials again this is another way of giving back it's another way of making sure the meets run we we need officials to make sure that the meets run also and that everything is legit because we are a club sport. So we cannot do this without officials, okay? So if you go on our website, all that information is there for doing the officials and anybody that is an official, thank you so much for doing that job because that's a very important job for our kids. So thank you. Last, last one, just reiterating how to stay connected with us. Those are the website, the Facebook, all that. You can get all that information there. And then the last one, the last one is my last quote because I love quotes. And I just thought this quote was great about, especially our club and where we are and we've come through a lot and I'm very proud of what everybody has done and all the hard work that everybody's put in to make GSCY, um, you know, where we are today. And, you know, this quote just hit me as the secret to change is not to focus all your energy not on fighting the old, but on building the new. And I just kind of want to focus that this year on everything that we're doing and really getting this club back up and running and getting back to normals. So at that point, that's everything. I know that was a lot of information, but again, we're going to have that all on our website so that you can find it there. I randomly was looking at chat and I know there were some dual meet questions right now. The league has not said about dual meets. So I don't have any information on dual meets. To be honest, dual meets are kind of tough. We, yes, we enjoy them, but with high school swimming and the way New Jersey does high school swimming, their dual meets are 
pretty intense with that schedule. So right now we do not have any information on dual meets. We do have six hosted meets planned for this year. So we should have more than enough swimming. Okay. Um, Andrea, you probably answered most of these questions. I see she did. Uh, wave group have equipment and sportswear. Yes, so equipment and sportswear. Uh, we will have the equipment list at the sale. The equipment list is also posted on our website. So the equipment list will be at the sportswear. So everything will be there for you to buy. Don't worry, you don't need it for tomorrow. Usually we give them a week or two to get swimming before we introduce equipment, unless they're older kids who already have the equipment, but the younger kids, they don't, don't stress. You don't need that equipment right away. Um, did I miss anything? New swimmers transferring. Can we initiate a transfer? Yes. Now I don't have the answer to this because transfer USA swimming is currently redoing their database. Oh, that's another thing I should say. USA Swimming is redoing their whole database. So we, what's going forward with USA Swimming is that we used to register everybody for the USA and that's not gonna happen. USA is requiring families to register their kids themselves. So we've been asked to put that on hold because the database right now is, I guess they're trying to still work on it. The, we're going to take this in steps. The first thing I am going to put out to the families is to go into USA Swimming though and create their new ID. And it's very easy when you go in and you hit login, you're not gonna log in your old password. What you're gonna do is you're gonna, there's a section that says create ID. You're gonna hit create ID. That's where you're gonna put in your new password and all that information. It's gonna say, are you a member? You're gonna say, yes. It's gonna shoot you an email. You confirm that back and then it shoots you your new ID. So that'll be our first step. And I will get those instructions. They are on USA Swimming. I did do them for my daughter uh, without any instructions. And I went on USA Swimming and it is, um, you can follow those instructions. The next step will then be to pay your USA membership so that the kids can swim in USA meets. That is the piece that the link for the club, I will send you a link when it's time to do that and you will use that link to sign up. That is the piece that we have been asked to hold off on right now, which is fine because USA Swimming, um, we don't have to do anything with that to November unless you're a new brand new swimmer and then we'll get that information out to you. Okay. <sighs> when you indicated swimmers, can, oh, it's going too fast now. Can you provide a link to the handbook? Handbook. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. The link is going so fast. I can't read all of them. I'm getting the last ones. Handbook. There is no link to the handbook right now. The handbook is going to be need to be signed off. I have to get that all prepared. It's, uh, I was working with marketing to finish up adding pieces in there. So that'll finish. What we'll do is we're going to require everybody to sign off and either bring the forms to the picnic. Once we get that sent out, the handbook can be signed off, brought to the picnic, dropped off there, or we'll put boxes out aside Bridgewater and Somerset Hills, and everybody can dump them in those boxes there too. So the handbook is to come shortly. So we now pay individually the U.S. swim fees. Or is that handled through the club? No, the USA registration fees will now be done on a family basis. We no longer can do that as a club. They've taken that away. Um, do swimmers get shirt and swim cap with name or we need to order uh, swim? Okay, so there will be shirts. That's all. you get shirts when we start. Mm -hmm. Swim caps and all those with the names, those are things you will order at the equipment sale. So when we have our equipment sale, you will order that. It'll give you a spot to put the names on there. Um, let me just go back through this. Uh, 70 comes from meaning expectation, make at least 70% of five practices. So the percentages are based on how many days you have of your swimming in that each group swims a different um, amount of days. So like seniors swim six days, we give them one day off and then they have those five other days. So that's where the percentage comes there. Uh, did swimmers, da, 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 da. let me see if I missed anything or if that Andrea probably already 
and you show the email. What email? I don't know what email. Somebody wants an email transfers. We answer database. Yes, is up and running. You can go ahead and get your your ID number. Can you explain what a dual, oh, a dual meet versus a hosted meet. A dual meet is two teams. That's all that would compete. So say like we would, it would be us and Lakeland. A hosted meet is an invitational meet where multiple teams are invited to the meet. Dual meets are what you see in um, high school swimming where two high school teams are swimming each other. New swimmers transferring, yes, do wave equipment, answer that. Um, I don't know what email anybody's looking for, but emails are also can be found on our website. Sportswear mentioned are things you can order. Yes, yeah, sportswear are things like sweatshirts, gear I'm wearing, things like that. Uh, da, da, da. We have order pickup sportswear, or they provide based on size provided. With zero. If you're ordering, you're when you're ordering. Ooh, hold on, when you're ordering sportswear. You're gonna order. There's gonna be an order form, and you can be over order whatever you want. She's gonna have stuff there for you guys to try on, so you get the right sizing. So what I suggest is, if you don't know the size, bring the kids with you. Let them try on all the stuff that they need, um, because that will be in there. Lightning North. There's only one dry land per week. Is that correct? We're working on a second dry land for Lightning North. We are. So guys, this is this is just what it is. Any business, as you all know, that is requiring in-person um, employment. I just went to the mall this weekend and uh, was told we couldn't try on the clothes that we wanted to try on because there weren't enough staff members to open up fitting rooms. So we are in that industry where we need people on deck. So Lightning North, we will... Um, has Wednesday and Sunday. Sorry, Andrea did put another day in there. So there are two days. But again, that makes a good point that we are trying our best um, with what we have and trying to get everything in there. But we are one of those teams and I'm hiring. I'm trying to recruit. If anybody knows people that are interesting in coaching, please send them our way. We are actively trying to get more staff on board. Is there a recommended clothes list? Um, I don't know what clothing list, but there is a list that will be at the sale of everything we offer. There's nothing really recommended. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, how do you know if the practice is dry land or pool? It says dry land and it's in red. Is dry land during the schedule practices or extra? It's extra. And everybody should have about two days. Bridgewater is our main location for dry land, except for the 12 and unders who do, um, who have site swimming, we will do dry land. Um, our dry land coach is working with Coach Andrea to establish something that's appropriate for the 12 and unders, okay? Do, for new swimmers, do I just bring kid or any of those two dates to Bridgewater to try and get it? I didn't see any order information. Okay. I'm assuming this is about sportswear and equipment. So order information will not be on the website. It will be at the location. She will also, once we get there, she will put it up on her website, California Beach Hut. So if you can't make it to one of the two days, she, you will be able to order online through her website also. But she will have all those forms and everything there. Uh, sportswear sale, yes, sportswear and equipment. When I say sportswear, I mean anything that represents us and that you can wear in the stands, that you can wear, um, you know, that's any kind of clothing thing. Equipment, fins, snorkels, paddles, pole buoys, goggles, swimsuits, uh, the swimsuits that you're going to wear to a meet, the storm swimsuit, that's equipment, that's everything that is a must. She will have all that there. Caps, all that stuff is equipment that will all be at the same sale as the sportswear. Okay. Uh, if my son, okay, so this is a question about an extracurricular a runner 
runs five days a week, is he still required to do dry land? We still want them to come and participate in our dry land. But again, this is something that you're going to want to speak to your lead coach and figure out what is the best for your son. Because at the same time, you know, if they're getting what they need there or what have you, and it's going to end, and then they start up our dry land routine. Our dry land um, running is an endurance sport. However, it is not going to gear them towards swimming. So the one thing that's important about dry land for swimming is making sure that you're doing the appropriate dry land for swimming because we use different muscles. What happens a lot of times our kids go off and, you know, it's great. They go off and do their own thing. They work with a personal trainer that's never done anything with swimming. And then they come and they can't rotate anything above their hip, their shoulders, especially with the guys, you know, it's cool to look real big and have those nice chests. And the image is very good, but if you can't rotate and have no flexibility in your shoulders, it's going to make swimming very difficult. So we do ask that you participate in our dry land because it is run by a dry land coach who is familiar with swimming. Uh, Thunder practice gets snorkel and paddles. They usually have paddles. Um, snorkels, I don't know. I can answer that if Thunder Group is going to have snorkels. Um, again, gear will be listed at the sale and it will be on, it might be on our website already. It will be then. So that's it. We're going to go back to having a, uh, normal season, hopefully. And I thank everybody for everything you guys have already done and letting us get to work with your children in this sport that we've all participated in ourselves and love and Hopefully we will stay on top. Well, we will stay on top. I know that. I'm for sure of that. We're, we, we got good background. So, all right. So that's everything in a nutshell. New parents, don't worry. We're going to get something together, a little more detailed for how to use TU, how to do all that fun stuff for you guys um, to get you on base. But again, really utilize that website. Even in TU, use the help. If you ever get stuck, just go in the help thing, type it in, and it will help you. Okay. So, but I'm looking forward to an exciting year. So, um, let's go storm. All right. Thank you guys. Bye bye.